Hi, this is JT from RMUF. I want to show you the basics of UAVs or how drones operate. All these function uh, the same way. Some are obviously larger for to carry different types of payloads. But uh, you have a, a remote control, a tablet, and inside the tablet there's an application that you download uh, either for the iPhone or for your Android device. And that allows for a seamless integration with uh, the cameras that are on these drones and the operation and telemetry that you'll be able to see uh, on a screenshot. You can see the battery life that's available, uh, the altitude that the drone is at, as well as the, the imagery that's coming off the drone. And you can control the camera and the gimbal on the drone so you can get uh, better uh, footage. Uh, you can swap the cameras out very easy on these machines. Um, this camera here is a XP thermal camera and it comes off very simple and you can put on a regular daytime camera that uh, takes 4K video as well as allows for some uh, zoom or some more theatrical um, detailed imagery if needed. The way that the drones operate is they have a gyro stabilization system as well as a GPS uh, locator. So the drone will stay very stable as it flies through the air and it knows where it's at with the geo coordinates so it's always going to try to stay in that position which allows for uh, you to then operate the camera while you're flying the drone. And we'll demonstrate that in just a minute. It's very important that you set up an area that is uh, free from any overhead obstructions any sort of uh, magnetic fields that might be in the area, such as power lines or buildings. And you also want to have a nice wide open area that's your takeoff and landing zone, so uh, no one's going to walk or get in the way there. So I take a look at the application. I see that I have a number of satellites available here, 14. I have a very good connection to the radio, and it's telling me that I have a GPS lock and I'm safe to fly. So what I'll do is hit the button here that's going to allow me to do a takeoff. Okay, so as you can see, as the drone lifts into the air, on this particular drone, the landing gear uh, come up and it allows the camera to have an unobstructed view of whatever you're going to be imaging. Uh, also, notice that the drone is just hovering here. It has the gyro stabilization as well as the GPS holds. So, no matter what, the wind's blowing a little bit, it's going to lock itself into the right position. As I'm flying too, you could also see the telemetry here how high I am off the ground and how far the drone is away from me. Now I'm going to move it away from me and I'm able to see the telemetry changing here. As I spin it here, that's called the yaw and I'm able to move it side to side, right and left and up and down with the remote. So the range of these drones is about a mile and a half. Uh, with the new FAA guidelines, uh, you're probably not going to be flying them out of sight unless you're using an autonomous program, uh, which may require a waiver if you're going to be operating these. Uh, also, the battery life is about uh, 20 to 30 minutes depending on the elevation and the wind. Uh, wind is a big factor because this is trying to right itself and keep itself in uh, the exact position. So if you're in a calm uh, wind conditions, uh, you're going to have a longer battery life. If it's very windy, the battery life is going to be shortened. Also, elevation wise, higher elevation, lower battery life, uh, lower elevation, longer battery life. Uh, we like to come out in the field with at least uh, four to six charge batteries if we're going to be flying anywhere more than in about an hour, just to make sure we have plenty of batteries and we'll also bring a charger with us to charge the batteries in the field if we need more. Uh, the payload on this drone in particular is just the uh, thermal camera right now. As you add payloads to the drone, that's going to affect the flight time. Okay, now I, uh, I'm going to do a return to home sequence here. Uh, I have the drone a, a distance away here. You can see it in the background. And so I'm going to start the return to home sequence. And I push the button here. The drone is moving to its home point. Just remember the home point isn't always exact. It's usually within about 5 to 10 feet of where it took off. So that's why it's nice to have a very large... Uh, area that you're designating as your landing and takeoff zone.
Okay, now that the drone has landed, uh, it's important to just do a quick inspection of the drone, make sure everything's okay. There were no issues when it was flying. The last piece of uh, having a uh, fleet of drones or a UAV uh, that you're flying is making sure you have uh, you know, the maintenance and the uh, other items that you're going to need to make sure that you uh, can keep your uh, drone and your camera uh, functioning properly. It's always important to uh, upgrade the firmware on the drones uh, and that's uh, very easy to do. There's also camera firmware as well as uh, firmware for the batteries. Uh, that all can be done by just uh, visiting our website or the DJI website and finding the latest firmware for your um, machine. Also, it's really important to have a nice storage case. Um, we have a lot of issues that uh, the drones get damaged in transportation, but when you have a very uh, rugged storage case, that doesn't happen. And these can be taken uh, as you travel, whether it's in your vehicle or uh, you can check them on the airplanes also. It's also important to make sure you maintain your batteries. Uh, we recommend uh, this battery charger here, the Smart Power Charger. It can charge up to four batteries uh, within an hour, and it does it in a way that is uh, ensuring that the batteries are discharged and recharged properly.